Welcome to the playground. My name is Eddie Flewellen. I am your host. And today my guest is Romeo Johnson, vocalist, songwriter, vocal coach. And um, I'm going to let him get into like that aspect of his career. First of all, <laughs> Romeo, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Good to be here, Eddie. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to start out by Absolutely. asking you as far as like this whole pandemic that we're in right now, how, how are you? How are you doing with that? Uh, Personally, I'm I'm very blessed, brother. I have uh, I have endured it very well. God has provided for me. Mm -hmm. um, in general, you know, it, it is a little hard to watch loved ones and friends lose loved ones. It's hard mm -hmm. to see the world in a state that we've never seen. I've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I look at the world, it's a little it's a bit of a downer. But personally. Uh, I've been blessed, you know, my, mm -hmm. my, my business has, uh, has mm -hmm. continued to, to remain steady throughout mm -hmm. this whole year mm -hmm. and uh, God is providing. Yeah. Good, good. Um, uh, <clears throat> as, as I remember we were talking earlier as far as, um, you know, what it was like that first day, you know, and for me yeah. personally, when, when things like shut down and everything and driving along like that 15 freeway here in Las Vegas, and right there on the freeway, you see like the the garages that that are like right there where the you know where the you know the, yeah. where the casinos or whatever. Mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I just happen to look over, and there's like not a single car in the garages, you know, it, which is like it, okay, this is for real. This is seriously for real. Exactly. You know? I so, I think that was the uh, that was the thing that made me realize how serious it was, and and it kind of spooked me at first because, mm -hmm. like I said, um, you know, uh, when it first happened, and as you said, when the the, when the strip shut down that mm -hmm. was like I, that was <coughs> inconceivable i mm -hmm. literally had to go i'm like i'm gonna go drive and see what this looks like and almost uh, i didn't because it was a it was like a ghost town and it was scary uh -huh. and that was my first point of almost panic because my first thought was well of course if people are being laid off and shut down they, the first one of the first things they're going to stop is vocal lessons <laughs> you know? so uh, i'm like that's mm -hmm. that is my primary source of income i coach almost on a daily basis to people around the world mm -hmm. and i thought this is not good uh, and i braced myself you know it's like mm -hmm. i'm going to be getting these calls and the, the very next day i got that call you know one client called me and said romeo I, i'm sorry bro i got laid off and i'm gonna have to stop you know with my daughter's lessons for a while and i was mm -hmm. like i totally understand brother i'm sorry you got laid off and i hung the phone up i'm like here we go Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we bring go. It on. Bring come. it on. You know, here, bring it on. Right. <laughs> and bro, within 48 hours, I think I had about eight clients to hit me up and say, Hey, are you accepting new clients? Uh, I want to start taking lessons now. And it, it totally flipped. It was the complete opposite of what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized a lot of people expressed me like I've always wanted to take lessons. I'm mm. kind of, we're stuck at home now. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else to do. I'm going to take this time to better myself and do something that I've always wanted to do rather than sit around and just be depressed. Mm. So it kind of worked in the opposite way that uh -huh. I thought, thank God. But, you know, I'm so used to God providing for me, man. I mean, it, it shocked me at first in a pleasant way. Uh -huh. And then I realized that's just kind of how he's been in my life for my whole mm. life. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting, that, though, too, because to your point, like now, you know, people are like realizing that, hey, you know, I have nothing to do. This is my time to do what it is I've always wanted to do. Or, you know, right. like those those people that, you know, have like that long grocery stuff. You know, hey, when I get time, I'm going to do that. <laughs> exactly. Well, now and you now got that's time. all we have. Right, right, right. So <laughs> that's that's great. That's great. And your yeah. your your reaction to that, I mean, you things are like really picking. They're picking up for you. They've been the business? completely I To be honest with you, I'm, I've been busier since the pandemic than I was wow. before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know there's been a couple of times where I called you. It's like, wow, okay, wow, he's been really busy. <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's been a blessing. It's been a uh -huh. blessing. And, you know, I love this. I love what I do, man. Um, mm -hmm. I love helping people, you know, especially young people, um, because I was so I was so blessed, man, when I came to pursue the music industry. So many people that I somewhat idolized as a kid, I met them and they just took me under their wings. And I just remember thinking, you know, whenever or if ever I'm in the position to to help other people, to guide them and keep them from, you know, running into brick walls, I want to be mm -hmm. that guy. So I hear you. That's to awesome. ultimately end up being able to do this. It's a, it's wonderful. I love helping people, and now I'm able to do it uh, through Zoom. 
to that's clients awesome. literally around the globe. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, um, you touched upon that, you know, when you were a kid, since you were a kid, let's go back to that. <laughs> okay, you got it. You got it. <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, Not at all. Uh, and what was that just a couple, three years ago? You were a <laughs> Yeah, a couple, three decades. Look, look, yeah, look at how good. <laughs> Couple three good decades one. ago. <laughs> good one. Good one. So, so as as far as like, uh, unlike like playing piano, I mean, I went and took lessons and all that. For for yeah. a vocalist, I mean, how did that start with you? How did you like? Um, were yeah. you one of those that just like somebody like said, "Hey, you know, you can sing"? How did that start for you? Yeah, I uh, I grew up in a family that sang. My mom sang very well. Mm -hmm. uh, no one, no one pursued it professionally. Mm -hmm. um, therefore. I didn't really see it as a special thing. You know, I came up in church and um, mm -hmm. my mom sang in the choir church and she was the choir president at one point. And my pastor sang and his sister sang well, mm -hmm. my siblings sang. So I just came up around singers mm -hmm. and I would wake up every morning and hear my mom in the kitchen cooking or whatever and singing. So I would wake up to this beautiful sound mm -hmm. and uh, I would just mimic her. You know? mm. From a very young age, I mean like six, maybe as far as I can remember back, maybe six years old, and I would mimic her, <clears throat> which I feel um, developed my falsetto a lot because I was always trying to sing what she was singing. And mm -hmm. uh, when I was when I was going through, uh, you know, the years where most kids, you know, are going through puberty and their voices change, I was singing every day. So I don't think I even gave it every day. an allowance every day. I just, uh -huh. you know, and, it, and and I didn't see it as I'm putting practice in. I was just singing because I liked it. And that's what we did, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but regardless, the muscle was being trained, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I didn't really think of it because where I'm from, I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm the mm -hmm. youngest before, mm -hmm. you know, and at that time in that region, it just wasn't being a musician was something you did as a hobby on the weekends mm -hmm. after you, and when you have your days off, your real job. Right. You know? so, <laughs> right. Right. Like, you gonna get a real job. And you play with your little band on the weekend uh, over uh, there at the club. Uh, you know. And th and that's so, what it was. Your little band. <laughs> your little band. Go do your little performance. Right. 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 With your, uh -huh. with, with your little guitar. <laughs> And your little friends. Yeah, yeah, and your little friends, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, you go, to, but you know, when those street lights come on, you better be back here. You better have your little butt back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. so uh it just wasn't encouraged, man. And um so I had a good job and you know, um everyone was like, you know what, just that whole pursuing music thing, that's just kind of that's that's kind of far-fetched. This fairy tale mm -hmm. stuff. You shouldn't do that. And but I loved it. You know what I'm saying? I played sports prior to that, but just doing music was just something that I, I really loved. Uh -huh. And I was a big fan of Prince. And at that time, Prince was just like taking the music scene over. And and I always had this knack. I always had the ability to hear harmonies, even before mm -hmm. I knew the word harmony. I didn't even uh -huh. know what that really was. Mm -hmm. I just knew I hear more voices and I can I can decipher one from the other. Mm -hmm. And so when Prince came out and started doing all of his harmonies by himself, the first album, he had a song called uh, For You. It was the name of the album. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. he had a song called For You. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it started out with, it was all voices. And it was mm -hmm. like bells and instruments. And I was like, man, I want to break this all down. And I was just, I was so far ahead of what I technically understood. But I knew I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't think of being a singer. That was not my thought. You know, I, I saw a bass player when I was about 15 years old, I think. I saw a bass player in a local band. And they were playing a Bootsy Collins song. And he did like this thing on his bass and the walls vibrated, <laughs> right? And I remember thinking, what is that, man? And now he just did, and the walls were like, <laughs> and I was like, man, what is that? Uh -huh, and uh -huh. he said, he said, you like that young man? Come in for a minute. He said, here, just you do it. I was like, I don't know how to do it. He said, just put your hand right here, hold the string down, and just slide it down. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was like, Whoop. right, right. Uh -huh, uh -huh, <laughs> He's like, uh -huh. no, slide it and let it go. Uh -huh. The moment I did that, I was like, that's it. This is what mm -hmm. Hello? and I ended up learning. My friend Sam Sims helped me learn and I put a band together and that was it. 
I mm-hmm. wanted to do that thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I studied Prince, and I love the fact that he um, that he played instruments mm-hmm. and sang. You know, I love that. And then um, and then all of a sudden, man, you know, you know, everyone was crazy about Michael Jackson mm-hmm. at that time too. Of course, I like Michael, but I was uh-huh. a Prince fan. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And because I love vocals, and because, like I said, I, I mimic my mom so much that I had this falsetto mm-hmm. thing. So of course I love Smokey Robinson and I love Eddie Kendricks, you know, mm-hmm. and and then all of a sudden, man, you know, this song comes on the radio and I'm like, who is that? And I'm listening to this song on the radio and they go, that's the new group called Switch. And I'm like, Switch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Switch. Oh, my. Switch. Okay. Oh, yes, okay. you did. Okay. So I'm like, bro, I was so Man, what? I was such a fan, bro. I was uh-huh. such a fan. Oh of my gosh, Switch, thank man. you. Thank you. And you're welcome, man. But every concept, and I'm not, I, I, people who know me know that I'm telling you the truth. I'm not saying uh-huh. this because it's you. Uh-huh. I'm honored to be on here, though. Oh, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> thank you but, for that. <laughs> absolutely. Uh-huh. But, man, when I, when I heard the harmony, mm-hmm. they blew me away. I was like, this is beautiful. And then I was like, this is because that was one of the first times to me that I heard like groove. Because mm. back at the time it was it was kind of a funk era. So you kind of heard funky tracks, grooves, mm-hmm. and like a funky vocal, like slave and right, Sammy, right. You know, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Or or you heard ballads and beautiful harmonies. Uh, you very rarely got to hear grooves and harmonies. So I was like, <laughs> this is the best of both worlds. And so I became a huge fan, man. And then I Thank went you, and man. bought the, the albums, absolutely, uh-huh. man. And I knew all you guys by name, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I think uh, I saw you guys once, maybe on Soul Train or something, and you talked about how you guys could all switch instruments. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so sure enough, I go to my band members. I'm like, dude, we got to switch instruments. <laughs> I'm like, I want to play keys on some stuff. Uh-huh. You play bass, and you play uh-huh. drums, and you play guitar. So we definitely tried to, uh, we got a lot from you guys to the point, man, I was, I was dressing like you guys. It was what I was, I went from my, my Prince look with, <laughs> to, to my blazers and my scarves and the open collar shirts. I was like, I was switched. I was smooth all of a sudden. You know? <laughs> I, I stopped being nasty and stopped uh, being smooth. All oh, of a that's <laughs> funny. That's funny. That's funny. And you, you're speaking of the open collar shirts and all that stuff. Now, now I got to ask you now, now back when we were coming up, like looking uh-huh. back at it now, I kind of laugh now because I look at those shirts and it's like, man, how many hairs did we have on our chest? <laughs> yeah, I think he had one. I didn't have any. And we got the nerve to like open up our shirts so everybody could see that. I got to ask Bro. you, how many did you have on your chest? <laughs> I have probably the same amount then that I have now. No, nope. <laughs> I had no hair on my chest. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and we I, joke, and it's I like, what were you showing off? It's like, <laughs> I was gonna say, I had no hair on my chest and I had no chest. <laughs> I was like, check out these ribs. <laughs> check out oh, these sexy funny, ribs, man. ladies. That's funny. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it was. But you know what? Mm-hmm. You couldn't tell me nothing. But you know what we would do? We put a we put a nice little necklace right there. There, oh my gosh, second. that's right, that's right. I forgot about that. You're right. You're right. Yeah, bro. Yeah. But you guys <laughs> changed the game for real. You guys nice changed the game there. for me, man. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. you. Got that awesome. nice little necklace. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, that, and that's uh, those were the, the uh, it was, it was Prince. It was Switch. Um. I mean, honestly, to be a, personally, of course, I like everyone else. I love Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder, Luther Bear. I loved everybody. Mm-hmm. But for me personally, honestly, I can honestly say it was um, it was print and switch. And then maybe later on, the deal. Like oh, yeah. The deal. Mm-hmm. It was it was those groups that that made me think this is absolutely what I want to do. And I'm definitely going to go and pursue this thing. And so wow. I went to LA and I pursued it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. But, uh, a so, bass yeah, I got player and, and bass. singing, singing up there. Yes. yes. Wow. Okay. It was, it was, uh, it wasn't that difficult either, man. It, it was, uh, I remember when I first uh, had to play and sing because I was just playing and I had this guy, it was a guy in the band who played keys and sang. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he was really talented. <clears throat> he still is really talented. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but we did our thing, man. And and I remember I got 
I got an opportunity to play in another band, which was an older, a group of older guys, but it was very, very good paying gig, especially at that time. I was probably 18, 18 mm-hmm. or 19. And at that time they were like, you know, if you come gig with us, we can pay you $500 a week. I'm like, what? what? We, were paying, we were getting paid almost nothing. You know, we were a local right? band. We were like getting right. a little penny. Right. And they had all this gear and stuff. And they were like, you know, you play and sing, right? I was like, yeah. They said, and you can do them both at the same time. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never was just... oh, what? Yeah. Yep. And the first song that I ever learned to play and sing was Let It Whip by the Dance Band. And I remember I sat down and I was like, let me figure out how to coordinate this. How I need to figure out what note falls on what, or what lyric falls on which note in order to make this make sense. Once mm-hmm. I got the hang mm-hmm. of that, then it was pretty easy. Uh, but I got, some, I got a, funny, a funny story to tell you. Okay. So I'm doing uh, a gig with a local band, mm-hmm. right? And I get off stage and often people would come and say, man, you guys are tight. Where, where are you guys from? I'm like, we're here. They're like, well, where are you from? I'm like, no, I'm from here. And they go, really? You don't, you don't, you feel like you should be in LA. And I'm like, that's crazy. Have you ever been to LA? I'm like, I've never been on the West. I've never really been out of Chattanooga. Mm-hmm. This one guy walks up to me one day and he goes, uh, I want you to meet somebody, man. I got a, I got a friend. He said, uh, do you know, the reason I'm saying this, man, is because you remind me of someone. He said, you know the singer named Bobby DeBarge? What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I oh said, don't tell me that's who He said, yeah. He, he said, you kind of remind me of Bobby DeBarge. I was like, man, that's the <sighs> biggest, one of the two people that you can blow me away with is Prince and Bobby DeBarge. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, what man. a compliment, said, though. That's a great What a compliment, compliment. man. Uh-huh. What uh-huh. a compliment. He said, man, you know, he said, I'm here in Chattanooga, but... I'm from Akron, he said, and uh, my good friend played guitar for for Switch. And I he's like, from Akron. He was from Akron. His guy's name was John Watts. He was an older guy, a little short guy, tons of personality. Uh huh. And he that said, name uh, sounds familiar to me. That's that's gonna bug me. Yeah. But, but anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I will see if I can find a picture of him for you. I'll yeah. show you. Uh-huh. So, so he says, uh, yeah, I said guitar. I'm like, I'm like, wait, okay. So I know who plays what. I mean, like, I know. Okay, Tommy plays bass, like all of them probably play a little <laughs> keyboards, you know. I know, you know, I'm like, you got Jody, you got Eddie, you got Man, you're running said, down all the I names. Said, <laughs> right, right. I was like, Clay, let me see. You got you got Philip. I said, Philip plays guitar a little bit. You talking about Philip? Like, no, 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 no. He said his name is uh David Potus. We call him little David. I was oh. like, <laughs> David Potus? Little David. Oh my gosh, that's exactly it. You told me. <laughs> Little David, right? Little David, so, yeah. Oh so my said, gosh! I said, okay. Now you know what we did back in the day. We always read credits, right? So I went home and I was like, let me see if he's telling the truth. And I was like, mm-hmm. that's that guy's name right there. That's who he said. Mm-hmm. So the guy contacted me, John Watts, and he said, man, we should go to to Akron. I want you to meet him. So I ended up going to Akron, bro, and I stayed in Akron for several months. You and went stayed to in Akron? David Polis's house. Sure did. <laughs> Record setting winter. <laughs> All times I go there, man. We're we snowed in, man. <laughs> Welcome to Akron. Giant. Welcome <laughs> to Akron. So I'm like, man, I had some amazing experiences, but man, that cold had me as a grown man in tears, man. I was crying every day, yes. like oh, oh, yes. I won't go home. <laughs> I, I remember being back being, being in LA and we were only there for like a few few, few years, you know, a few years. Uh-huh. And and yeah. you know, getting all like all the news reports and all that stuff. The, like you said, the record setting winner that we were having back back home. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and of course we're in, you know, sunny California. Sunny California. <laughs> You're like, oh, I feel so bad for my people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah call home. You guys okay? Okay. You I'm okay? not gonna tell you what the weather is here. Yeah, right. But, you know, you How guys- did in California? <laughs> Never mind. Don't, right. don't worry about it. <laughs> right, right. How about those about. Indians? Huh? They they do a good. <laughs> so wow, wow, Look, man. Okay. Yeah. So I stayed at David's house with him, and we, uh, he and the the guy that I was telling you about that was in my band. Uh-huh. The three of us. We put a little unit together, and we were killing, man. We practiced David, all. It was little David. Oh, my little God. David Post. Character, oh, what a character, man. Big time, big time, but can play what? his behind off. Yeah, man, with that little 
raspy little high voice. Yep, could play his behind off. And I got to tell you, I mean, play. even when we were kids in our first band with me, him, and Philip, we were all played in our, that's our first local band. And mm -hmm. little David, um, I mean, the way that he could play, I mean, he could play like nobody's business as like, what I think was like 15, 15, you know, 14, you know, mm -hmm. 14 years old, playing like that, you know. Wow. And I knew he was serious because my, uh, he, his amp was, it was a Marshall amp, you know. And you can imagine at, at that wow. age they have a Marshall amp, but not not wow. Um, well, there was no such thing as a small Marshall amp. I mean, he had like the right the, the deal, and that was That's my like, introduction. That was like the rock stars amplifier, totally. Like, totally. And that know, was my Eddie introduction. Van Halen, exactly, you know. exactly. And I would come to find that out like years later. That was my introduction to, to Marshall as as like a, as a business or whatever. I'm like, wow. and you know, unlike like everybody else, you know, they had like the the the, the cushion PVs and, and mm -hmm, all that. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, to, to have he, David, uh, you know, playing guitar like that out of a Marshall amp, and I'm like, okay, this dude is serious. I mean, you at know. that age, wow, yeah. man, yeah. that is yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. He was serious. He was always serious about his equipment. Even when I was there, he was serious about his equipment, Still. His pedals, <laughs> and everything. He wanted to. He knew exactly what pedals to to, to link up to what. And I was like, uh -huh. bro, uh -huh. yeah, he was amazing, man. And uh -huh. I had a good time in acting. Man, I ended up. He introduced me to uh, who he called his second mom, which was James Ingram's mother. And we would go over uh, there on a regular right, basis. Right down the street, right? Right Was that on, on still on Fuller? Fuller Street? Fuller Street, that's the name of it. Fuller it. Street. On Fuller I'll never street. forget it. Her yep. house was white and it had green shutters. And man, uh -huh. that woman was so sweet to us, man. Mm -hmm. she, mm -hmm. she fed us and yep. uh, she, I was she, super yeah. skinny when I went to Akron. I was fat when I left. <laughs> I was, it was my first time in life ever being chunky, man. I was like, what? Just like, she would throw down. Oh, bro. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you, and, and you, you, was, you remember how the moms and the grandmothers were back back, back then? You know, boy, go in there and get you some dinner. Yeah, right? You better finish that. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. They they feed you like they're feeding like two grown Army. men. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you're like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm full now. Mm -hmm. What you mean you're full? You didn't eat. You hardly ate like, anything. You better... <laughs> Well, right, she right. got me nice and chunky, man, uh -huh, and um, uh -huh. it was just some great experiences, man. I had I had some great experiences with some wonderful people in Ohio. So I have a a, a connection to to uh, Akron, Ohio, man, and and it just continued, man. Between that and, of course, I ended up later on working with James and and Philip and wow. you uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> and I toured with Michael Jackson with with uh, Kevin Dorsey. Uh huh. And uh, -huh. uh, oh my God, I got you know, I got to tell you, Romeo, you were, you were so cool in the fact that, like you said, we we worked together and all that, and that that's where I am. Um, um, like like listen to your story now. I would t I would tell people like you know, hey, I didn't know. People would tell me I didn't know that you did this. I didn't know that you did that. And I'm like, well, I was never one of those guys that carried around a megaphone. I I just did right. what I did or that's whatever. Right. That's right. And you're telling me all this, and I had no idea the whole time that we worked together. I mean, the <laughs> Akron connection that you. <laughs> and we have done full. We you and I have done full gigs together totally. all night long, multiple totally. times. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Totally. But yeah, man, I, I, you know, like I said, that's where I am, and 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 I love that about you. It's like I don't, I don't need to carry around a megaphone. I just did what I did, and and there's a story right there, you know. Absolutely. And you're you're definitely Absolutely. one of those cats. I mean, you, you the whole time I worked with you, like I said, I had no idea, you know, little David. I mean, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not even so much as a hint that <laughs> I know. It, it, it's oh so, yeah, it's and so Eddie, funny. did you know that I live in Akron? No. <laughs> Isn't that yeah, you know what? Now that you say that, that is funny because every time, uh, the first time that I stepped on stage with you and I sang with the, you guys, I think the first show was at uh, the Blue Martini yeah, the Blue in Martini Vegas. Vegas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember, I'm, I'm sure I told you, I think I went over there and I said, man, I'm a huge fan of Switch. I know I told mm -hmm. you that. Mm -hmm. But at that time, you know, I, my mind is always so focused on the gig at hand. And exactly. all I wanted to do, I wanted to make sure that I stepped up that night and did what uh, Corey at the time had asked me to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, the professional that you are, what is that? You know, <laughs> you know, right? So I was like, man, I just want to come in and impress. And, and that's kind of been uh, what I've learned to do throughout my career and what I teach my, um, my clients and my mentees. I'm like, you know what? When you come on a new gig, 
let them be impressed with your work first. Mm -hmm. And then later on, the conversations will come. You mm -hmm. Don't come right in and start trying to tell, you don't have to talk, talk yourself into impressing them. Just do it, do your mm -hmm. job, and then they're gonna dig you, and then you'll get an opportunity, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was my thought. I was like, man, I just wanna come in here and do my thing, uh -huh. you know? And, and uh, every gig to me is a blessing, man. Like I've never been, I, I never have understood those people who kind of carry this attitude. Well, I've done this gig and I've done this gig. So I'm supposed to come in with a certain amount of reverence expected. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, lots of people go, I didn't know you toured with Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. And you know what, you, what you're doing this gig for? I'm like, it's just a gig and it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's what we mm -hmm. do and it's what right. we love, you know? Right, right. What, what are you talking about? So, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I was, I was honored, man. I was honored to be on the stage with you that night, man. man and, uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And I'll never and, and you're, you're you're talking about like letting your work speak for itself, and then the conversation will come later. And I got to tell you, Romeo, every gig he came to, he came prepared. Uh, you, like I said, the true professional that you are, and all that. And it's funny, like that was like so many years ago, and now we're having that conversation. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. You know, like I, said, it, I had no idea, no <laughs> idea whatsoever. That that's great. That's hey, great. man, I just so, want to come and jam with y'all. Thank you, thank you. So, mm -hmm. so you get to LA, or did you did you go back to Chattanooga after Akron, or, or did I you did. I, I left. Uh, I left Akron. I went back to a, Chattanooga. A, a little heavier. <laughs> a little heavier. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even wear most of my clothes. Man. Oh man, that's but funny. I, it was uh -huh. funny, man. Uh -huh. uh, so she had this thing real quick. I'm gonna go. She had okay. this thing where she would cook whatever she would cook. She would always make these. It was like cornbread, but she would make them like pancakes. And then, oh. and then she'd have like greens and she'd have whatever meat she made that night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let me stop because mm -hmm. I'm gonna go eat something right now. I know, I, I know. There's a name but, for those, and I can't think of what they are, but they man, that's the best. That is so they good. Were, they were delicious. <laughs> so yeah. so I went back to Chattanooga, but now, you know, every experience that I had let me know this is definitely what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Chattanooga and now my mind was set. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. for the first time I've left my home state. And I've I've jammed with other people, mm -hmm. and and I'm getting the approval, and I'm getting the encouragement from this guy who worked with Twitch, which is one of my favorite bands, and he's telling me, "You bad man, mm -hmm. you bad man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you bad." Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you man, you're taking me back. Oh my gosh, now, now I gotta reach out. <laughs> You know, you know how David had that. I gotta call him. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, you bad. It was yeah. good working with Twitch, man. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so I went back and I was like, "This is it. This is what I'm going to pursue." So I started studying and I started looking at management and I started looking at how this thing works because I had no clue. I had no clue about the business part of it. Oh, I, was, wow. I was good, right? Mm -hmm. So I started reading and I started studying people like Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, uh, LA and Face, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I remember reading about this guy named Clarence Avon. <laughs> and uh, his name was everywhere. And so uh, that's a whole nother story in itself, but long okay. story short. Well, 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 since we're there, I do have to ask you as, as far as Clarence Avon, uh, 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 I recently had, I don't know, do you know Penny Ford? Absolutely. Vocalist? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I recently had her on and she brought she brought up Clarence's name. And of course, the the the, the documentary about Clarence is out and, and all that, right? The Black Godfather. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, right. Mm -hmm. And as in fact, at the beginning of the pandemic, that was like one of the first movies that I watched, right? Amazing. I gotta ask you, and I asked I asked Penny at the time, when you were there in the business at that time, you had had you did you know who Clarence Avant was? Did you meet him? Did you Okay, no, but he was he you. was like this name, like you know. I have the crazy. You no, know he's story. somebody. I'm I sorry. Have the crazy story. I have, I have the crazy story. Man. Please do tell. Please. <laughs> it's in my book. It's in my book. By the way, I have a book. I'm gonna and, show it to you. Yeah, we, we're book. gonna come to that. Please. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So it's in my book. So well, while we're there, young, please say the name. The name of the book while we're there. The name of the book is "Following the Voice: Sounds mm -hmm. Produced from Heaven." From I'll heaven. show you a copy yep. of it in a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um. So I'm in, I'm in Chattanooga now and my mind is made up. This is what I, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do this. I don't know the steps to make, but I research it every day, right? Mm -hmm. And people in Chattanooga are trying to help me. But like I said, it's just not a place where a lot of people knew a lot about the industry. So mm -hmm. 
Um, so I'm reading, and I'm reading the back of credits and albums and stuff, and I kept seeing, you know, management or such and such studios. All the studios was like Burbank and Hollywood. Mm -hmm. and so I'm like, I definitely gotta go to mm -hmm. California. This is mm -hmm. it's, it's no way to get around this. Mm -hmm. And then I kept seeing management, Claire and Savant, you know, on Jimmy mm -hmm. Jam and Terry Lewis's stuff, you know, on SOS stuff, on anything that Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis is doing. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at Babyface and 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 L.A. Reid, Claire Savant. I'm looking at somebody else. I'm like, so it's so funny, man. Being 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 green and and mm -hmm. naive. Now at that time, I'm about to take you back, Eddie. Mm -hmm. At that time. This was long before cell phones and all that stuff. Long before. Time, this is when <laughs> this is when you had to call long distance from your home phone. It was an extra charge, right? And at this time, this is when you could call this number and it would give you long distance operators. And you say, <laughs> uh, could you totally dating us now. <laughs> <laughs> dating us, right? Uh, long distance operator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids watching this like, what? <laughs> right? It's right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long distance operator, I'm like, uh, hi, uh, could you connect me to Clarence Avon's office in Burbank, California? Uh, connecting you to Clarence Avon. I don't even know why I did that. Wait a minute, from Chattanooga, you did this? From Chattanooga on my mom's phone, right? I'm downstairs in my little area. And so I'm like, what am, I, what am I doing? I really don't know what I was doing. I didn't know why I was doing it. And I just didn't think it was going to happen. So I'm sitting there. I must have been 19, I guess, 18, 19. So I'm like, ring, ring. Clarence Avon's office. Um, can I speak to Clarence, please? <laughs> um, Mr. Avon is busy right now. Um, what is this pertaining to? Uh, management. Okay, you're an artist, you need management? Uh, yes. And what's your name? Uh, Romeo Johnson. Okay, is he expecting you? No, I don't think so. Well, hold on a second. Clarence Avon. No. Uh -uh. Check this out, Eddie. Uh, uh, click. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, oh. Ooh. Bro, bro, I was like, ah. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so now let me tell you what that did to me. First of all, was, okay. <laughs> first of all, I was blown away. I was like, what did I just do? Like, oh my god, I was embarrassed. I was, I was everything. I had so many mixed emotions. I'm sure. But at, the, but at the end of it, what it did was it, it snapped. It snapped my mindset because being raised in Chattanooga, there was like this, there was like this thought that successful people are from other places. Uh, mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, to be in this business, you gotta be in LA. You gotta be mm. in New York. You gotta, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, You're not gonna, you can't come from Chattanooga. So I literally felt like people were intangible, unreachable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I remember thinking, man, what did I do? What am I doing? Why do I even call him? I don't even have anything prepared. And then all of a sudden something goes, but if you did, you got through to him. If you did have something prepared, so go get something prepared. Uh, and now that you see people are reachable, touchable, attainable, go for it. So it completely opened my mind up. And then I thought, I'm gonna get myself together. Uh -huh. And I and I did that, you know, and that's when I pursued it. I've never to this day met Clarence Avon. And I know so many people who know him. Really? Yeah. And, wow. and check this out. When that doc, when that documentary came on and I saw it, I was embarrassed all over again because I'm like, oh my God. I brought that feeling all over. <laughs> I'm like, he's 10 times huger than I ever thought he was. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because uh -huh. he, he's done so many things that I had no idea, man. But it, it, yeah. he was he was one of those names. I remember like us coming up at the business, all this stuff. He was one of those names that you always heard. And yeah. you knew he was in the business, but never yeah. had, I never had the opportunity to meet. He was almost like yeah. God. It's like, okay. He's, like, a, he's exactly. Here, like a wizard, you know. like a wizard, like a, exactly. Hidden, like exactly. A, you exactly. know, like who is he? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's like, like you, Charlie from later. Charlie's Angels. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> years later, you know, the, there's this movie about him and then he did like all this stuff or, or whatever. And man. I'm like, man, man, man. Yeah. Even and outside Penny, of music. 
Mm-hmm. And Penny was the same when I when I, I asked her this, when she first brought it up. I asked her, I'm like, had you ever met him? And she's like, no. And she's like, but he was again. He was that name that we all heard, you know. And the blessed few got to actually be in the room with him, you know. But what yeah. a lesson for yeah. you. I mean, and that should be a lesson to like those that are up and coming. And that's one of the things I like about the show because I like you know for those that are up and coming in the business, you want to hear from these people, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You want to hear from, and that's a great story. It's like, like you said, he's now reachable, you know. So if yeah. I can reach this yeah. guy, <laughs> you uh, know, this guy, right? Mm-hmm. It, it gave me, it gave me confidence to really go for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I went to LA, man, uh, I got, I knew no one. Mm-hmm. I didn't have anything. And that you didn't shrink I, from that, Romeo. I mean, you did not, you didn't let that like break you, you know? No, no, mm-hmm. I didn't, man. Um, I just had this belief, man. Uh, I really, I've always had a relationship. I was raised, you know, trusting God and learning mm-hmm. to have a close relationship with Him. But I've always had this feeling that He, He had, He had me covered, you know. Mm-hmm. And when, and when, I was, my spirit was spoken to. Mm-hmm. I just moved on it, you know what I'm saying. And that was one thing that was instilled in me, probably from being uh, my parents' son and being the youngest of four it just trickled down that much more from each sibling as well. Uh, you know, we just felt like, you know what, if it's, if it's spoken to you or you feel like God has spoken to you, move. And mm. that's, that's kind of the basis of my book, Following the okay. Voice is what I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Being that I was the vocal coach on the TV show, The Voice. A lot of people th- think that the book is about what I've done since I left the show. But mm-hmm. the book called Following the Voice is literally talking about how I followed God's voice throughout my whole career. I've never mm-hmm. had a manager and I've never had an agent ever. So, nice. so all of the things that are the, uh, that the doors that opened up for me and uh, the gigs that I've had, man, it literally came from me praying and God telling me, go here, speak to that person, avoid mm-hmm. that person, be here at mm-hmm. that time, mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just led me to do so many great things. But when I got to LA, man, meeting people, like um that's the Williams another Ohio another person. Ohio yep another Ohio mm-hmm. girl Phil, <laughs> right Phil and I knew her Justin. in her prime and in, in, in the big in the beginning you know my and first, to see her my, my very first tour ever she what? Gave my very first tour yeah uh-huh. Uh-huh. my very first tour was Vesta Williams but Vesta and James and you and 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 uh Kevin Dorsey who's like my big brother now you know oh, and wow, Kevin. and uh you know and, and then Meeting Greg, you know what I'm saying? And Greg, mm-hmm. man, Greg's hilarious, man. That's one of the coolest <laughs> brothers, man. <laughs> you know. I watched, your, I watched your interview with him and your interview with uh, Dorsey, Kevin Dorsey. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I was cracking up, man. <laughs> I was cracking up. Yeah. And he it's ate. funny, on both of those interviews, going in, I knew it was going to be, like you, It's uh, man, it's going to be hard for me <laughs> not to laugh. <laughs> and I mean, the, the dude, I mean, the place you took me in this interview, man, I'm like, wow. <laughs> I didn't expect yeah. to go there. I did not expect to go. Yeah, there. man. So, yeah. Um. So, so you're you're in LA now, and and are you are you performing a lot? Like with because I'm like you you started like the list of people that you work with with, with Vesta. I might have here yeah. Jody Watley, Sheena, um, mm-hmm. Michael, and Janet Jackson. Yeah. You yeah. you toured you toured with them. Both you, of them. I toured mm-hmm. both of them. Uh, and uh, you know that was another major blessing i'm actually the only singer that ever toured with both janet and, and my ah wow yeah. okay yeah uh-huh. but uh I, when i got to la i literally got there and i was in men's retail and i thought you know what i'm gonna go i'm gonna work i'm gonna sell suits and i'm gonna chill so for like oh you first, mean you're gonna have a real job now i had a, yeah i gotta get a real job right <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, uh, yeah, enough with that yeah. little music thing you're doing. Yeah, over here. forget the little, the little music thing <laughs> right. with your little friends. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Go get you a job when you finish playing with your little friends at right, the little right. music thing. So, right. <laughs> and look, it's so disrespectful. It ain't even little. It's just little. Right, right. Go get your your little. <laughs> Go right. out there with your little, your right, little right. friends. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Doing your doing your little music. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Yep. Yeah. So I come to LA and I I get a job. I'm like, well, let's just let me get acclimated and see mm-hmm. what it's about. Cause it was a culture shock. It was totally different in every way. Mm-hmm. And so I was working. I was kind of feeling it out. What's this like? What are people like? Uh, Cause you know, Chattanooga, Tennessee. You see each other if you get eye contact. You just go, hey, how you doing? Mm-hmm. How you doing? Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. California, you say hi to somebody, it looks at you like, do, do you know me? Right, you, I, right, <laughs> so right. How right. to get used to all that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so Marla Gibbs had a spot called Marla's Memory Lane. Um, oh, and that's yeah. where, yeah, that's where oh. it's like a lot of, you remember that? Uh, like they yeah. had like their little talent shows once a week. And I would ask people like, uh, if, where if, can if, I go? If, if y'all, if, if you guys missed that, he did say that's where they had their little talent shows. I'm just saying. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> you I did. So they had their, their little talent shows. That's where they had their little talent show. <laughs> the little talent show after they got off from their real job. <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so I went there and I started watching it. I was basically trying to gauge where I fit in. Mm-hmm. It's basically what I was doing. So I'm like, I want to see what this talent is like here and how people respond to it. And it was good for me, man. I went in, I was quiet. I tucked myself in the corner and I watched people perform. And I remember comparing, you know, and I watched mm-hmm. one singer and I would go, Ooh, okay. Jeez, mm-hmm. I gotta practice. I gotta practice. Like I really love how he did that and how he, you know, he's mm-hmm. really commanding the crowd. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I gotta put some work in. Mm-hmm. Then I see someone else go up, and I'm thinking, yeah, all right. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I could get them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching the crowd respond. So after about four or five weeks of doing that, four or five you know, weeks, four or five weeks, wow. I would go back and watch and watch. Now after every week. I would spend the whole week practicing where I saw I was falling short, right? Wow. So if okay. I saw someone perform, I was like, man, I'm not as good in that area as he is. So I would go home and practice that thing. So you were literally you know? like taking notes, for, I mean, for yourself. I mean, this is your education. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. Okay. And mm-hmm. after about four or five weeks, maybe the sixth week, I went and I talked to the musical director. And I said, how do you how do you get on? How do you perform? And he said, well, you, can you sing? I said, uh, yeah. And he said, uh, mm, you just have to go fill out the form, tell us what song you want to sing. And then midweek, we'll call you. Mm-hmm. And we kind of vibe it out. You go through the song with us. And if it's cool, you come in and you, you hit next week. So I said, okay, cool. He said, what song do you want to do? I said, uh, uh, Reason by Earth, Wind and Fire. He goes, Oh yeah? I said, yeah. He said, you can do that? I'm like, mm, okay. And then next week I came and I did reasons and I got a really cool response. And it was like, man, I can't even tell you. You know, I've never done drugs before, Eddie, but I'm assuming mm-hmm, <laughs> that's what mm-hmm. a first high is feels mm-hmm, like because mm-hmm. I was like, this is incredible. Like I am 3,000 miles away from home singing to an audience that's used to hearing people that I look up to mm-hmm. and they, they just accepted me. Mm-hmm. And when I came off, people were like, yo, what's your name? What's your name? You got a card? I was like, mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Got right. there. Okay. You, you got a piece of paper? <laughs> get you some, yeah, I got a napkin and a drink. <laughs> nah, bro. Uh-huh. You come back here next week and have a business card. Uh-huh. And so I did that. And then, um, uh, my first gig, my first real gig was I bumped into Ollie Woodson. Oh. Ollie Woodson, formerly Temptation singer, right. Mm-hmm. And I had known Ollie from Atlanta and Chattanooga, so I already knew him. Mm-hmm. And he's in LA and he's, re- we, I saw him, we ran to each other. And he, immediately, he, you know Ollie, Romeo, what right. you doing out here, man? Right. <laughs> what you doing out here right. in California? Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I said, I live out here now. Oh, is that right? You want to do some gigs with me? I said, yeah. So I started doing some gigs with Ollie as a bass player. Because that's what he knew me at. Oh. So I started doing gigs with him as a bass player. Now this is Ollie gone, so he's solo now. He was solo at this okay. point, right. Okay. And so we were doing these spots called, I think it was, oh, I get them confused. Maybe it was either page four or stage one. It was two clubs sounded a lot alike. But, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so one day he heard me singing and he's like, wait a minute. You can sing. <laughs> you never tell me you can sing. Get your microphone. Put a microphone in front of him. Dude, <laughs> you, need to, you need to be doing impressions because you got these guys <laughs> nailed. <laughs> That's totally out. Uh-huh. Why you uh-huh. tell me you can sing? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so he said, 
So you do it harmonies. I said, uh-huh. harmonies, yeah. Can you sing this harmony right now? And that uh-huh. was it. He, we started doing harmonies. Then before you know it, he was like, I tell you what, I'm going to get another bass player. I just want you to sing with me. Wow. And that was it. So I uh-huh. became Ollie's guy for years. And through Ollie, I met Chief Charlie Wilson. I was going to say Bobby everybody. Womack, right, right. Leslie Wilson from New mm-hmm. Birth. Mm-hmm. And I became accepted in the music scene as, oh, that's Ollie Wilson's dude. Right. I accept because he was my mentor. Right. And then right. I toured with Vesta. And then uh, after Vesta, Jody Watley. After Jody Watley, Sheena Easton. After Sheena Easton, Janet Jackson. So that nice. was kind of like the series of things. It was just a blessing, man. One tour led to another tour, mm-hmm. literally. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. That that started. Vesta was Vesta was my first tour. It started like in 1989. I've never stopped working since then. Wow, wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. And was yeah. Ali? Uh, obviously, Ali was like he was cool. He was cool to work with, and just a good, good, good guy. Uh, Ali was like my literally like my big brother. I mean, yeah. when, I mean, Ali would come to my mom's house in Tennessee. Nice. Like my family, he was family friend and. Um, yeah, man, Ali was like my, my, literally like my brother, man. And he was, gotcha. we were super, super, super close. That's great. In total, probably 20, 26, 27 years, I knew him. When he passed away, I've been known him for, for that long. Long wow. before he got with the Temptations, I knew him. Oh, wow. Okay. So, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Cause he used to have a, he used to have a trio in Atlanta called the Ollie Wilson Trio before he got with the Temptations. Oh, okay. They, and they would come to Chattanooga and perform in this club called Johari that I used to sing in. So I, uh, yeah, we kind of go back. But okay. Ollie was a, a wonderful guy, man. Super, mm-hmm. super generous, super loving, loved to share, loved to teach. He was serious about mm-hmm. that music and he was hard on drummers. <laughs> yeah, he was hard okay. on drummers because mm-hmm. he's a drummer. He's mm-hmm. a drummer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. he was hard on drummers. And if you, if you're in his band and you're making mistakes, yeah, he can be rough. But really, uh, really, yeah, or, okay. or he can he can be rough. But he's a, <laughs> he's a he's a he's a sweet guy. But if you mess uh, enough, he's gonna let you have it. I remember when I first saw Ali with the Temptations, and 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 my, the first words out of my mouth: if there's if there's anybody who could have been like who was a, re- a replacement, who could have been rough. original, that would have that was Ali. Ali was like such a natural temptation to me. I mean, he's he got that right. Them like a glove. I know? agree. Yeah, I agree. yeah. So I agree. He he was uh, the closest to a David Ruffin yeah, energy yep. that mm-hmm, you could get. Mm-hmm. And he just had a swagger about him. I mean, you what you watch him on stage, man. He just had like this thing about him that was like, dude. <laughs> His swag was on a billion. Yeah, yeah. At, yep. yep. at all yep. times. Yeah, at all times. Awesome, awesome. On and off stage. On and off stage. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. Yeah. He was so, a- so let me ask you. This. So now you're you're touring with all these people. You 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 talk about gaining experience and talk about like the teachers that you've had like over the years or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I want to ask you about the session. You you've done a lot of sessions naturally. You've done a lot of sessions well, and I have like a list of people. I mean, the scope of people that you've worked with. I mean, we're talking like singers, mm-hmm. rappers. <laughs> oh yeah, wow. yeah. I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy that you bring that. Up. I forgot about that. Yeah. So. Being on the West Coast, uh, you know, that West Coast rap thing mm-hmm. was really popular. And mm-hmm. um, so I met these young ladies who were amazing singers. And uh, and so I'm still friends with them now. One's name is Tracy Nelson, one's mm-hmm. uh, Skylar Jordan. Uh, and then later I met another one named uh, Monet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those <laughs> between... <laughs> Between you know Monet, she's here in Vegas now. Uh-huh, but uh-huh. if but between those um, Monet Owens, by the way, mm-hmm. between those three girls, they were being called to do a lot of the vocals on the West Coast rap uh, records. Oh, Tracy, man. I know for sure. Tracy grew up with with Dr. Dre, so mm-hmm. they were friends from when they were young. Mm-hmm. And so we started to do gigs together, and they uh, they were impressed with my ability to blend with them. And they were impressed with the fact that uh, I could sing really low or really high. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess, I don't even remember which artist I worked with first, but they start to just share my information to the West Coast rappers. And mm. before you know it, they had me on Ice Cube's records, Mac 10, 
uh, exhibit. I, what's his name? Uh, Nate Dog, mm, Snoop Dog, Snoop. Mm -hmm. I, all I, the I, dogs. Did you remember? <laughs> yeah, all the dogs. <laughs> all dogs. Yeah, that was a brand. <laughs> right. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I yeah, mean, you man, with, I mean, with the gam, I mean, you work with like the whole, the crew. Man, it was. It's been such a blessing. And one thing that I think uh, you probably agree, coming up doing cover bands and stuff as kids, it makes you so versatile. Mm -hmm. You know, I played bass with Adam Ant for a while. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah I uh -huh. played bass with Adam Ant. I did. Uh, you know, just doing the, the gig from doing a, I did. I toured with MC Hammer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did MC Hammer, but to go from, Did you sing or play with MC? Uh, with him? Uh, MC Hammer, I sang. I sang. Oh, okay, okay. I sang. Now, but are you still playing go, bass? You know what's funny, man? I'm rusty. I do play some, so I'll pick it up. I got basses all around. This is crazy, man. I'll show you. Look at it. Look at it. There they are. <laughs> basses all around me, man. Uh -huh. Where's my uh -huh. bass? Oh, that's, uh -huh. yeah, that was hiding a little bit. There she is. But, oh, there uh, she is. Uh -huh. So they're all around me, man. Um, but the funny thing is, man, one of the one of the my favorite bass players, and one mm -hmm. of my favorite uh, uh, one of the people that I'm impressed most with as a bass teacher mm -hmm. is Seiku Bunch. You know Seiku Bunch? Oh yeah, he 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 uh, did a few gigs with us on uh, while we were out playing. Yeah, with Switch. Seiku, I great bass player. Man, I literally didn't just he play with Stevie for a minute. I man, I think I think Seiku has played with everybody that's ever. Yeah saying is you uh, ask me right, he's right. done so many gigs mm -hmm. but i just reached out to him i was like say cool man i want to take bass lessons i want to get my chops back up because i've gone so long focusing on vocals that when i pick my bass up it feels foreign to me now i'm like it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like it used to just feel like an extension of me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh but i'm gonna get, i want to get with him and get my get my, my chops back wow wow that's good yeah, that's great there's nobody better uh-huh <laughs> so so let me ask you so and again i was i was talking about like this list of people that you both performed with that you recorded with or whatever how do you yeah. go from all that and then you come to vocal coach right how, where, how, again, did, how does how does the coaching how, how how did that happen how'd that come about so here's what's funny man um you know that saying where they say if you want to make god laugh tell him your plans <laughs> oh right <laughs> so the, yes, I've heard that. <laughs> the the thing that I feel that, again, following the voice, I had my mind set. I believe that in my life, God has led me to, to get where I want to be and where he needs me to be without allowing me to think that I'm in control, right? Ah, uh, nice. So when I, when I left Chattanooga, I knew that I was going to be a bass player for somebody. I was a huge fan of all the bass players. Mark mm -hmm. Adams from Slave and Cedric Martin from Confunction and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Tommy DeBarge from Switch, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I had all these guys that I looked up to. And, and when I got to LA, um, I did a couple of gigs as a bass player. You know, I did, I did Joey Watley and I did mm -hmm. Sheena Easton. Um, but when I got hired, by the way, the, the first gig that I did was Vesta as a vocalist. But <clears throat> when I got hired with Janet Jackson, obviously it was a vocal gig. And that tour was so big and it was so covered by MTV and it would last it for almost three years. Mm -hmm. By the time that tour was over, everyone knew me as a vocalist. People forgot I played bass, so I mm -hmm. continued to get called as a vocalist. Mm -hmm. And and then when they start to understand that I understood harmonies and blend and how to put sections together and how to put arrangements together, thanks to Valerie Pinkston and thanks to Patrice Russian, who helped me a lot with understanding arranging, arrangements. Mm -hmm. I started to get called for um, vocal contracting um, and, and sessions, right? Mm -hmm. And so eventually someone, people started to ask me if I could help. You know, can you help my daughter? She's trying to learn how to sing. And I'm like, sure. I wasn't charging anything. I was just helping. And uh, I realized that that was something that uh, that I was anointed to do. Like, nice. I, once I heard a, a few, once I heard a few people say, "Wow, I, I could never understand it before," but for some reason, you make it, you make me understand it. Mm. And I was like, wow. And I realized when I'm teaching 
that God would give me sometimes analogies in the moment that I'd never thought of before, nice. right? And mm -hmm. I felt like, okay, this is proof to me, in my opinion, that God is like, this is, I'm supporting you in this, you know? Mm -hmm. If you do this, then I got you. I'm gonna speak things you don't even know to speak. I'm gonna uh, break things down in ways you've never broken them down before. And it allowed me to teach every artist or every client individually. Mm -hmm. So. I started helping people. And at the time, my primary source of income, I was touring. I was making a lot of money from tours. Mm -hmm, I was mm -hmm. making a lot of money from recording. So I was like, this is, I don't know, I'll do it. I'll help people. I wouldn't charge them anything. Mm -hmm. And then finally got to the point where people were like, yeah, you, you need to charge me. Like, you can't just be doing this to everybody. You got to charge. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right. So I put a little amount on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, Steve Harvey was doing a talent show, I think at the El Ray Theater, and this girl sang. And he was impressed with her. She was 13 years old. And he got on his radio show the next day and he said, um, I heard this young girl last night. She was incredible. I think she's got a lot of potential. She just needs a little vocal coach. And he said, if there's any vocal coaches out there who's just willing to help this girl out, if you give her some lessons, I will shout you out. I'll give you a shout out on the radio station. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear this. My my personal assistant actually heard it. Mm -hmm. And so she made an executive decision <laughs> to, to mm -hmm. volunteer me. And she wow. told me about it. I was like, so I said, no problem, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So the girl comes to me, she takes about three lessons and then she goes to Steve Harvey's radio show, sings the same song that he heard her sing. I think it was the Whitney Houston song. She sang the same song for him and he was blown away. And he was like, whoa. What happened like you she said i've been taking lessons from the guys the guy reached out to us like you said and his name is romeo johnson and she said i've had like three lessons from him and he was like that's incredible blah 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 blah. Yeah. continue to teach her um at the time it's funny I don't, it never did we never did really follow up on it i don't think he really gave us a shout out i was just glad to help her mm -hmm. uh fast mm -hmm. forward i see steve harvey at an award show uh maybe a bet award show something i don't remember what it was and I go and I introduce myself to him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, he was talking to someone. So I saw him and I kind of like, kind of stood by for a minute to let them finish talk. Right. And, right. I, and I remember thinking, like, I remember him looking at me like, why is this dude standing here? Uh -huh, <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> and he, so he finally turned, I was like, how you doing? I said, uh, Miss Harvey, my name is uh, Romeo Johnson. It's nice to meet you. And he said, nice to meet you, bro. And I said, I'm the vocal coach that helped you. Remember the young girl a few years back? Uh, and he was like, yeah. And he turned, he goes, man, what did you do? Because she was, and we had a little quick conversation. And he said, man, that's awesome, man. He said, you you really helped that girl. He said, I saw a drastic difference. He said, how wow. much do you charge? Uh -huh. And I told him how much I charged. He was like, no, man, you got to charge more than that. Really? And I remember, he, yeah, he said, you got, he said, uh, he said, man, you could change people's lives. What you're teaching people to do can buy their family houses in the future and change. He said, no, you got to start. And I was like, yeah, I said, most of my clients are like college people. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, said, he said, that's not your problem, man. He said, I don't mean to be cold. He said, but the way you work, you got to ask for what you work. He said, because people are going, they're going to accept whatever you say you work. That's what they're going to believe. He mm -hmm. said, and some people, some people, if you don't put a big enough price tag, they ain't going to want to come to you because they can feel like you must not be that good. Ah, uh, good point. I was like, okay. So I did that, man. And sure enough, my clients start to get more serious. Bigger clients start to come. And um, the next thing you know, you know, I started to get called by celebrities. Uh -huh. And the word came out. I never set out to be that. I never, I never put that title on myself. I mm -hmm. started hearing people mm -hmm. say, you know, that Romeo's, he's the vocal coach, da 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 da. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then it was like, oh, you know, he's a celebrity. Folk. All that came to me and dropped mm -hmm. in my lap. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, okay, well, we'll go with it. Right, right, and right. Then, and then I met this guy who was the a r for Diddy. In a session, guy, his name is Shannon Ridley. We call mm -hmm. him Slam. Mm -hmm. And he was the a r for Diddy. And I met him and I helped these girls. My cousin was one who's an amazing singer and writer, Mika Lett. And we were in a session that she called me to. And there was an issue that came up and I helped with a, a just uh, intonation issue. And he was like, nice. He said, are you a vocal coach? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And so we created a relationship. And then he said, man, would you coach Diddy for me? I was like, Diddy? Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh huh. Um, Coach Diddy doing what? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. I was like, does Diddy sing? He was like, uh huh. Not really, but he wants to, man. He's about to do this record. I'm like, who is it? I said, oh, okay. He said, man, if anybody could do it, I think you can, man. Do it for me, man. I was like, let's talk about it. Long mm-hmm. story short, we meet. I meet with Diddy. We work it out. I coach him. I coach him for about four sessions. And then he asked me to coach Cassie. I coached Cassie for about two sessions. And then um, something I, f- I failed to mention, I had not discussed money at all, which is something I never do. I never go into a job without getting everything straight up front. Mm-hmm. And so I did not discuss money at all. It, I just didn't, I didn't talk about it. And uh, the young lady that I was dating at the time, I remember she was like, what are you going to charge Diddy? What are you going to charge Diddy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, right. I'm going to charge him what I charge. Right. Yeah. You can't charge Diddy the same you charge everybody else. He won't respect you. And I, right. I, said, yeah, but right. I can't charge him more just because he's rich. That's just right. my service. I said, I don't feel right doing it. Well, you need to. And it became this big argument. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to pray on that one. And he approaches me and I never, I never settled what I was going to do. Okay. So when he said, uh, Hey, Rome, I'm headed to New York for a few days. He said, but Cassie's ready for you to come in, do your lesson. I said, okay, cool. He goes, by the way, man, I haven't paid you yet. He says, it's like six lessons in. I don't even know what you charge, man. What mm-hmm. do I owe you? Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, oh, snap, I never did. Uh, uh, what am I going to say, right? <laughs> and <laughs> so right. I look, Eddie, and uh, this is one of those moments, man, I talk to people about a lot of times when, when, when you know, well, clearly, in case you haven't figured out yet, I'm a Christian. <laughs> so, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so this is one of those moments where I feel like the Holy Spirit spoke through me, you know, and well, I don't feel like I know because mm-hmm. what came oh, yeah. out of my mouth, what came out of my mouth never, never was a thought process first. Uh-huh. And, and it wasn't even a phrase that I would even say, you know, so Diddy says, how much do I owe you? And I was like, oh, snap, what am I going to say? Boom, out of my mouth comes, bro, don't pay me anything. The, the value of your endorsement is far more than I can put on these lessons. What? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell did I just say? What am I like? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Huh? Uh-huh. I'm like, it's like out-of-body experience. I'm like, what right. did I just say? Right, right. right. Diddy looks at me like, are you serious? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eddie, I'm sitting there as I'm saying this in my mind, I'm picturing the stack of bills that's at my house on the table right now. <laughs> and I'm like, what uh, am I saying? Uh, I have bills. Like, um, and he goes, okay, that's what's up, bro. He said, you sure? Yeah. Cause I'm like, what am I going to do? I can't back out now. Right. Uh-huh. But he goes, all right. He said, okay. All right. So he's like, I'll see you next week. And for two days, I wrestled with that, man. I'm sure you did. Whoa. You know, I'm especially sure you when did. I got home and saw those bills on the table. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> what uh-huh. I'm thinking. Uh-huh. And so uh, I just kept thinking, man, I don't know why I did that. And then, of course, after a minute, I'm like, well, wrong. If you know that that didn't come from you, that had to, that had to come from God. Right. right. You know, it mm-hmm. just came out. So I'm like, you just got to let that go and, and trust mm-hmm. that whatever reason you that blurted out of your mouth is the reason. Mm-hmm. And then shortly after that, I got a phone call and it said, hi, Romeo. Uh, my name is blah, blah, blah from MTV. We're doing a new television show where P. Diddy and Mark Burnett are co-executive producers. Uh, and it's called Star Maker. P. Mm-hmm. Denny Star Maker and Mr. Sean Combs said that no one is to be the vocal coach on this show but you if you want the job. So do you want it? And so changed my life. I'm sure. I'm changed sure. Life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, changed my, wow. That was my first first television show of a few. The first yeah, I was gonna say the first of many. Yeah. 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 That's that's something like you said, I mean, literally an out of body experience, you know, where, where you know, 
I, okay, this isn't Romeo, but whoever this is, I'm going to let you go on ahead and finish this conversation. <laughs> exactly. Because I don't know what to say. I definitely right. didn't know to say that. Right, right, oh, right. I'm like, who talks like that? <laughs> man, man. So, the value of your endorsement. Right. <laughs> what I could put on it. What? I'm like, God, could you have at least made it sound like something I would have said? Uh -huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That that experience though, that's you've got that that is in your book. Yes, absolutely. Good. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't absolutely. know if that book is near you. Um yeah, hold on, let me see if I can grab okay. it for you. Yeah. I gotta be around. I keep them around. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, people. Excuse me. All Sorry. Good. All good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> I'm sorry, people. I'm coming back. You would think a, 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 a prepared person would have it with them. No, 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 no it's all you. Ah, there, there it is. Go. There it is. And we can order That's that. It. Is that available on Amazon? And all the, it's all available those? on Amazon. But if you want to get it autographed, you can go straight to RomeoJohnson.com. There you go. There you go. That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Man, man. Romeo, let me ask you this as a, as a final question. And, and you've... Mm -hmm. you've, you've kind of covered it but those for those that are up and coming in the business or whatever and and it's it's kind of difficult now because of the pandemic or whatever or maybe maybe it's not but what 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 advice would you offer those that are like up and coming like in the business whether they be a singer or an instrumentalist or whatever what advice would you mm -hmm. offer them man uh <clears throat> the one the, the some of the most important things that i talk to my young mentees about uh, it's number one. It's hard for them right now. I think uh, the difference between us when we were coming up and and kids today is a drastic difference. In we were so eager to learn and so proud to say who we learned from. Mm -hmm. You know that what I'm saying? So you, you couldn't give someone a compliment. You know man those are some dope chords you play eddie man mm -hmm. such and such taught me this it's just mm -hmm. like, it comes mm -hmm. out right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we still to this day even at the age that we are now you know i'm 57 years old mm -hmm. when when i'm around patrice russian i still feel like i'm 16 and i've been knowing <sighs> her i've been knowing her for years you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. there's a reverence that lets me know no matter what accomplishments i have I still can learn, especially from people like that. Yeah. You know, today, the thought is, I want to be a star and famous so much that they they shoot for this, you know, the social media following, the looks, the this, the that, and they feel like, they feel like, you know, well, you just got through talking about it earlier, how we were around each other a lot, and I didn't come to you and be like, yes, yeah, so you know, I toured with Michael Jackson with Kevin mm -hmm. Dawson, you know, you know, we don't do that, you mm -hmm. know, uh, they feel like I have to prove to you I'm a star, mm. you know, I have to prove to you I'm a star right out the gate, and then they don't want to learn, they don't want to listen, some of them do, but they, it's a problem these days, they don't want to give credit and pay homage, I can't explain how important that is. Mm -hmm. I can't explain how important it is because I tell my mentees all the time, if someone is helping you, you're going to need more help in the future. Mm -hmm. So if I help you and you don't acknowledge me or you don't say thank you, then it's going to make me not want to help you as much next mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to tell you something that I'm taking my time my knowledge, my experiences to share with you and the whole time be like, I know, I know, I got, I do that. I know, I know, I know. Then I'm gonna go, okay, well, cool. Yeah, right. You got it. <laughs> you got it. Right, right. So when you, when you run face first into that brick wall, don't be like, why didn't you say something? I assumed you knew because mm -hmm, you knew everything mm -hmm. else. You, you said you knew. <laughs> you said you knew. Mm -hmm, Listen, mm -hmm. man. I mean, like I said, I still respect Kevin Dorsey, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I still respect Patrice, you know what I'm saying? I still, when they speak, you know, I mean, all but only only reason I don't call them ma'am and sir is because they probably don't want me to. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But 
I still have that and I'm going to always have that. And if I can stress to these people, these young people, as long as you're humble, no matter what you do, as long as you're humble, willing to listen and learn, I tell my sons, if a young man comes and tells you 10 things and out of those 10 things, you already knew eight of them, then that means that you learned two things. <laughs> that that doesn't mean that you should shut him down for the eighth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So guess what? Be quiet. Be quiet. Mm -hmm. Because if those two things were number four and number eight, then you learn mm -hmm. two things. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But if you say, if they're number six and seven, and by number five, you said, I know, I know, I know, you may mm -hmm. not have gotten those two. Right. You know exactly. Exactly. Yep. yep. All right. So, man, I just say stay humble. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, you know, it, from my from my point of view, I'm going to always tell people to keep God first, you know, mm -hmm. try to try to treat people uh, the way you want to be treated. Um, and, uh, you know, take you take your craft seriously. Of course, I mean, we all people say that all the time. And I do want to reiterate that whatever you do, obviously practice and stay on top of thank it. you uh, thank you you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying you definitely mm -hmm. want to do that because and, and don't say that you practiced if you didn't <laughs> please don't because it's going to show and then you're going to look worse you thank know? you but thank you to get people to understand that because it's going to show <laughs> it's going <laughs> to don't show. think that we don't know <laughs> please don't please don't uh -huh. Uh -huh. i tell people all the time the best like we heard i said it to you earlier the best thing that you can do for an artist is to give them the comfort in knowing that they can rely on you holding that part down mm. period ah. don't don't mm. get on the gig trying to be the teacher's pet and cracking jokes and laughing mm. no well i'm gonna you know that's my girl we friends mm -hmm. that's my dude mm -hmm. that's my mm -hmm. homie mm. no y'all gonna be you're gonna be the homie when he goes man you played that chord exactly that chord progression you the first mm -hmm. people player to play that chord progression mm -hmm. right well mm -hmm. eddie's my i love eddie man but, <laughs> you know you know what i'm saying uh, that's what we want that's what mm -hmm. an artist wants because right. when they're out front they want to feel like, man, I can totally focus on being me and pleasing y'all without thinking, Thank you. what was that? What Great was that point. for? Great point. Great point. That's how you win. That's how mm -hmm. you win. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Man, Romeo. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is, Romeo Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> my man first of all i really got to thank you for the walk down memory lane thank you for for taking me back home <laughs> to accurate. places that the, to places that wow i didn't know anybody else knew about man that part. <laughs> man man, man you just i'll told never me, forget oh my gosh oh my i'll gosh. never forget it thank I'll you never forget it man thank, thank you. you man and thank you guys man for influencing me and being a part of one of the the bands that were absolutely the a key factor in me wanting to pursue this thing. Uh, man, like you guys you. were amazing, man. I, I really, you know, I know, I know what it's like, man, when you're part of something and that's just part of your life and you mm -hmm. live through it, mm -hmm. you probably don't realize how strongly you guys impact, impacted people. Wow. And wow. then um, not just the fans who loved y'all listening to you guys, but bands from that point on, you know, mm -hmm. um, like I said, man, you know, there wouldn't be a mint condition, in my opinion, if there weren't bands like Switch for them to look up to. Thank you. Like, I just believe that, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Romeo, man. <laughs> oh, and we can find out where you are and the things you're doing at Romeo, RomeoJohnson.com. RomeoJohnson.com. Yeah. And that's, where, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. where you can purchase the book? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. RomeoJohnson.com. It'll lead you to everything. My Instagram is official Romeo J, in case you just want to go straight to okay. it. Uh, yep. Instagram is official Romeo J, and Facebook is just Romeo Johnson Vocal Coach. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> man, man. Bruh. I, I, I always tell people, you know, like when, when I have people like, you know, on, or, you know, like my guests or, you know, like especially those people that, that tune in. I always consider myself just as much a student as they are, you know, because it's people like yeah. you that teach them and me. And and you remember when we played together, I, I, I tell you, Romeo, I'm back here taking notes. I'm, I'm taking notes. I'm literally <laughs> taking always notes. Always me out because I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm singing from taking notes from you guys back in the day. And which, by the way, Eddie, real quick, uh -huh. did you know that I ended up coaching Elder Barge at one point? No, I did not. Well, how, how recent? That was, oh, that had to have been, geez, seven, 
maybe 10 years ago. Maybe wow, 10 years ago. Man. It was kind of, you remember when he had kind of like been away from the scene for a while mm -hmm. and he came back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, about 10 years ago. About 20, actually 11 years ago, about around 2010-ish or something like that. Mm. And they called me and they were like, Romeo, we, uh, uh, we want you to, to coach El Bar. And I remember thinking, I can't do that. How? Like I grew up, <laughs> I grew up studying Bobby and, and uh -huh. L. You know, I'm like, I, uh -huh. I, 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 mm -hmm. I, and I, that was for the first time. It's the only, the only time I feel like I got, I, I, I can't, <laughs> I don't know. you know. And, uh, and but I went to the rehearsal, and I said I would do it. You know, I went to the rehearsal, and the first thing that was cool is that he was so, he was so warm. You know, as soon as I, as soon as he walked in, you know, he saw me. He's like, Ron, what's up, man? Are you gonna help me? I said, yeah. He said, thank you, Glenn. Thank you for being here. And I was like, cool. And, and I watched him go through the show. And I'm taking notes the whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's a trip because I studied him and, and Bobby so much mm -hmm. that I know everything they do. Uh. So, and I'm, and I'm watching him. And it was amazing because his high notes were crystal clear. He was killing mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. His lower register was very comfortable. It was that upper mid range that he was approaching differently than he used to. Ah, okay. So I took notes on it. And then afterwards, you know, I went and I sat in the room with him and we talked and it was me and him and his manager. And I said, listen, I said, um, he said, so what is, what's going on, man? He said, are you hearing us? I said, I do. So I explained to him what, what he's doing. I said, you know, the highs are great, the lows are da da da. This is where he goes. It's exactly what's happening. He said, it's what I feel. You saw, you heard that. I said, yeah. I said, I've mm -hmm. been studying you for most of my life. You know. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, what you're doing now is you're approaching the vocal in this way versus how you used to approach it that way. So you, then he goes, how do I change that? So I said, well, you got to change it by doing this. And I told mm -hmm. him, and then mm -hmm. I gave him an example of it. And mm -hmm. he's like, damn. Mm -hmm. He goes, so, so you're saying, so I explained him how to do it. He said, I'm going to try it. So he tried it. And he actually did it correctly, but he was like half committed to it. Like he was a little nervous about it, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. he did it and he kind of had a look on his face like, no, I mm -hmm. said, no, no, no. I said, do it again, mm -hmm. but commit to it because your technique was right, but you mm -hmm. were kind of doubting yourself. Mm -hmm. And he did it three times in a row and nailed it. And he was like, damn, wow. how you show me something that nobody's shown me in all these years? I said, all I've shown you is what you showed me. Uh, <laughs> Literally. Oh, wow. Literally. Uh-huh. Yeah, wow. Yeah. I got to yeah. tell you real quick, real quick, speaking about, I just saw a thing and you probably saw it too, uh, just on, on YouTube, like in, like a week ago, a couple weeks ago. And man, it was, I think it was like, an, it looked like he was like at a record store or something like that, but it was just him and playing the piano. piano and singing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And man, I, you know, and I, I'm, mm, his, he sounded beautiful. And I, you know, I, I've, I've heard Al a lot over the years or whatever, but there was something about this performance where I'm like, Man, yeah, he made me miss Bobby. He made me miss Bobby like I know like, really, really bad. I was like, Yes, man, <laughs> you know, yeah. just to hear yeah, him man. sound that good, and it, it just brought back all these memories of Bobby and 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 of course L L's great vocals or whatever. Absolutely. Um, but you and know, they're both but, such great you know, songwriters. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But as you know, mm. Bobby's like he's that voice, you know. And again, I can't stress it enough. I mean, just listen to L like that one time. I just, I just like missed Bob. I know. Really I know. Him. I know. Yeah. It almost brought me to tears. I know it. I know it moved you guys. Yep. 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 So, yeah. well, listen, um, I've wasted enough of your time. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's always great chopping it up with you, man. Running into you, man. Even whether, Thank it's, you, at, man. whether it's at NAM or whether it's at one of the gigs, <laughs> it doesn't matter, man. It's always good running into you, brother. Man, and where you take me, man, I know you so much better. I feel like I know you so much better now. And thank you just so much for that opportunity to, again, meet you again. Absolutely. Absolutely, <laughs> and, man. My pleasure. I'm honored man, to be a part of your show, man. Man, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the playground where the players play. Romeo Johnson, everybody, my love to you, man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Love you, bro. It. All right. No we'll doubt. talk to you. All right. All right. God bless.